um, we are starting this uh, panel now and uh, welcome everyone again for uh, online and offline. So I'll, um, uh, together with Nele, I, uh, uh, we will moderate this and we have some uh, interesting participants. Uh, as you see, uh, the diversity of the panel is not our strongest point today, but considering it's a female event, I think we're doing well. So Nele, maybe you want to start with the first question? Yeah. Sure. So welcome also from my side. Uh, so we prepared a few questions, but it would also be nice if we get some interaction later, of course, from the audience. So if you have questions, please also don't hesitate to ask uh, the panelists. Um, so first question we wanted to ask you, and we will ask all of you one by one, I guess, is to briefly introduce uh, yourself and um, to give us your viewpoint on the, the challenges of bringing research results to companies or more specifically to to startup companies. So maybe we can start. Sure, yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I introduced myself uh, before and one of the things that I mentioned um, when, I, when I talked about MeshCloud and, and how it all happened basically is that we changed our business model in quite early actually, one year, one and a half years after we started. And um, well, the initial idea was to create this European cloud provider and to like federate all the European data centers and so on. And this idea actually came out of university, right? It came out of research. Um, we thought, okay, like cloud should be commodity, infrastructure services should be the same. Why not use different ones? Why not like enable people to just leverage different providers that do that? And while it was a great idea and a good concept and we like got a lot of sponsorships and prices and everything on it, um, it actually didn't work out in the market. So I think one important thing is to just like face reality and see what works and what doesn't work and how you have to adapt and how you can be flexible basically to take into consideration who are your customers, like what are their needs and how um, you reach them, how you address them and how do you solve some problem for them so that they're willing to pay you money for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so flexibility and yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Please. Uh, yeah, I'm the hardware lady here, I guess. <laughs> um, so my name is Katarina and I'm founder and CEO of the company Vectorflow. We do aerodynamic measurement systems for all kinds of flows. So it can be gas, oil, water, it doesn't matter. As long as there's a flow, we measure something. Uh, so we take several parameters out of it. So pressure, temperature, velocity, basically everything what you can get out of the flow. And you need it, for example, when you're at BMW and you want to create a very aerodynamic car then you need to know um, how the flow goes around the car and that's what we are telling you with our systems or if there's a drone flying and uh, for example it would uh, go into a wind gust um, our system detects at the front and uh, takes over the control and says for example our engine on the right more power so that uh, the drone can stable, um, stable uh, fly and uh, go on. So it's a lot of uh, CO2 reduction because uh, everything is more aerodynamic. And I founded this company almost seven years ago uh, in a beautiful uh, Munich, so in Bavaria. <laughs> and it's also nice to stay, uh, to be here. And uh, I think innovation is really, really important, not just at the beginning um, when you found a company, but also the whole time uh, during uh, you have the company. Because uh, if you do not innovate uh, and you stay still, then other uh, will take over. So uh, we are, for example, half, yeah, almost half of the employees are also doing research, uh, uh, like in different um, research prior research project so that uh, when we for example hear from a customer yeah uh, we like to have this and that and uh, when i hear from one customer say yeah, okay i don't care but when i uh, hear it several times then we think okay maybe there's really a need for that and so we develop something uh, so uh, we are really really close to the customer and i would uh, also uh, recommend to you that you should talk with the people who will uh, buy yourself if you want to build a company uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, listen a lot and uh, then develop and implement it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. So actually the same message comes back a bit like adapting to the needs of, yeah, <laughs> thanks a lot. I think being flexible is yeah. like the thing for the new, uh, new years. No. Thank you very yeah. much. 
Hi, I'm Carmen from Biobox. I'm also in hardware. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are doing bioplastics. Um, we have the goal to take bioplastics um, into new applications. Um, our main goal um, is to go into uh, medicine because uh, bioplastics, some of them are bio-based and some of them are biodegradable and some of them also biodegrade within the body. So if you have an implant to heal bone fractures, for example, um, then of course, if the implant is biodegradable in your body, then you will not need a second operation to remove that implant and it will give, uh, it will have less risk for the patients. Um, it's cheaper. It's just more convenient and all over and on the way to this very um, innovative and very difficult application we are also looking into other um, other fields for example in hospitals the um, the waste the plastic waste it's uh, it's huge amounts because for example um, in the operation the, uh, everything is packaged twice because it needs to be sterile and then the, all this plastic waste is burned because it could be contaminated so um, if we would replace that with bio-based plastics then we could uh, save a lot of uh, fossil um, co2 and well yeah that's that's our goal <laughs> for the future um, as for innovations i wanted to say the same thing as you so i'm <laughs> trying to think of something else um, I think in the beginning, because we are only one year old at the moment, um, it's very difficult to get funding if you don't have a finished product yet. Um, because most investors want to fund if you have a finished product and you have the first customers, because then there's obviously very little risk to it. Based. But if you have an idea and maybe did a little bit of research in university, then the step from bringing that idea into a real product um, it has a lot of risks, but it also it, it takes time and um, and money to to do that. And it's that step is quite difficult, uh, quite difficult to 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 fund. That's what well what I I found. Am I allowed to ask a question or just you jump in? <laughs> okay, great. Uh, can you three D print your plastic? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, great! Because our stuff so three D. Okay. We have so much in common. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Then we go to Thank you. our yeah. man in the panel. Yeah. <laughs> so my name is the panelist. The panelist. The panelist. My name is Stepan Pitsek. Uh, I'm associate professor at Radboud University. Yeah, it seems seven years, one year. Uh, so we recently got money for startup. So we are starting the startup. Um, it will be working on all kinds of security and AI. So whatever is security and AI, AI oriented, we say we will cover it sooner or later. Uh, so I do not have a lot of experience yet, on ex except on the problems. Uh, so what I found the biggest problems are first, um, you get a lot of ideas that sound very cool, very interesting from the research perspective. But then when you start talking with people from companies, they commonly are much less enthusiastic about purely research components. So it's very very much struggle to convince them, no, 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 this also has practical importance. And second thing I also noticed is when you talk with them, they always ask, okay, how much is it worth? How much is your product worth? And then, yeah, I, I don't know, how much do you want to give me? So I think that's also very difficult, especially in the security um, domain to, to understand in the beginning, how much is your product actually worth? Is it 50,000? Is it half a million? Is it whatever. So yeah, that's somehow our current experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So I, I hear some similarities again, because you said like you have to come with a with a product already to convince companies. I, I think that's also what you're also facing now, that yes. it's not concrete enough, maybe, or, or that that's something you have to convince them of. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Najwa. Hello, my name is Najwa Araj. I introduced myself a bit earlier. Um, I'm a chief researcher of the Cryptography Research Center at the Technology Innovation Institute. Um, today, we have quite a fairly large team that we're working on multiple areas of cryptography. Uh, we work in, on post-quantum crypto. We work on uh, development of cryptographic libraries, both in software and also on uh, 
crypto engineering, so hardware IP cores. We work on privacy preserving schemes. Uh, we work on crypto analysis, uh, et cetera. Um, the team today, I would say the, the focus is varied between more fundamental research and applied research where we cover technology readiness level, if you're familiar with the term between TRL1 and TRL4. And we reach a point where the problem of pushing that technology to the customer becomes one of the main things that, uh, that we need to do. Um, so today, obviously, when, when uh, customer need and the use cases and the demand in the market that uh, the fellow panelists mentioned is a very big concern and one of the main, uh, let's say, predictors of whether a technology will work or not. But the other thing, especially if we're not talking about the whole system, but more of system components is platform compatibility. How can I take my technology and then adapt it to specific systems or integrate it with other systems? Um, one, one thing that also I find to be challenging from taking a proof of concept in the lab to the real industry is today there's a bit of lack of standardization and lack of standardization process, especially with technologies that are related to crypto and machine learning. So we're still missing a bit of explainability of models so that you know the industry has enough reassurance in order to integrate them in, in uh, real systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, about convincing uh, yeah. customers, let's say. Okay, thank you. Please. Thank you. Uh, it's quite hard listening to everyone, not forgetting uh, what to say about myself. <laughs> um, my name is Luisa Wenkemann and I'm the co-founder of Nackt Stoffschmiede. Um, I'm actually, an architect. I study here at TU Darmstadt as well. Um, while NACT doesn't have so much to do <laughs> with architecture, um, it helped me um, learn a lot about how to create something and how to think about the customer's experience as well. Um, with NACT, we developed um, sustainable textile innovations. Um, and the first product we launched is our sustainable reusable makeup cl removing cloth. So it's a makeup towel that takes off every dirt, every makeup on your face just by adding water. Um, it's a textile that has never um, existed like this before. So we had to um, yeah, create everything from the start to the finished product um, ourselves. It took a lot of time. Um, well, obviously we weren't experts at the beginning, um, but we had a little um, experience in finding new materials um, in the sustainable area. Um, yeah, this is the first um, first uh, innovation, and now we're focusing um, on one hand more on natural cosmetics, but also on integrating the textile material in different areas. Also in B two in the B two B market, um, we have a lot of uh, talks with people who are thinking. Um, to integrate it more into the cleaning area, um, not to be too specific. Um, and I think the B2B market is for us actually more easy to approach because people understand innovation behind the material. Um, it's not cotton, but it's also not regular plastic. So it's something new, it's made from, um, from plants and also um, green waste. So um, I think our biggest struggle to learn was how to communicate that with the B2C customers, with the people using just the everyday product mm -hmm. um, to tell them it's actually not just like a Aschlappen, <laughs> not just your regular, um, what it just looks like. And it's also not plastic, it's actually something new. And that's why it's it has a bigger price tag and um, mm -hmm. you can use it for a longer time. It's more hygienic. And all these arguments, we're always like talking so much and people are like, oh, I don't even know like what to, what to get out of it. So the communication of innovation with regular customers who didn't even expect to hear so much about the product, mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah. So, so if I understand correctly, you're going into markets that you didn't expect before also, like when you say like the cleaning, et cetera. So. So it's actually also about adapting to yeah, what comes to your path, uh, I guess, when you, yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, okay, yeah. yeah, let's continue it's after this first round. So um, next thing we want to ask you is like, because we see like most, uh, more and more academics considering this uh, startup venture, 
we have example here, Stepan, uh, but maybe also like you have uh, from your own uh, experience uh, also thoughts on that. So can the two careers be combined and what would you see as the best combination? Like uh, uh, through some advisory board, can it be 50-50, you know, like anything that comes to mind, uh, please, whoever wants to start with something on that. As I said, it's uh, like uh, it's really important to always uh, do innovation in your uh, company. So uh, most of my people have like really 50-50. They have customer projects, but they also have like innovation projects where they have to uh, develop something. So I guess it's quite easy to combine, although my employees would say no, but um, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, and I think it's also necessary and it also uh, is uh, like the the interesting thing so if you're doing the whole uh, the work the whole time it's the same it's super boring if you if you have like some are the same but uh, then there are more and more uh, new things uh, I guess that's way more appropriate but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I may uh, Leila so mm -hmm. I think uh, the involvement of academics and people that are more focused on research brings a bit of more not a bit, actually brings scientific depth to technologies. But what I find is important when academics sit on board is that also they have a long-term view about the feasibility of a specific technology. Mm -hmm. And this might be relevant to technologies, like for example, quantum technologies today, cyber technologies, et cetera. So technologies that are more on the longer term. So there is this, this uh, sort of validation of a specific investment in technology. It's not about the time to market, it's not about customers need, etc. It's more about the feasibility of technology and bringing this depth to it. So you're basically now saying how it's also advantages for both sides, right? Yes. For academics and for the companies. Yes, exactly. Nice. It's an interesting point. But uh, one thing would I just like to add, oh, yeah. sorry. sorry. No, 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 um, no is, uh, it does also match a bit uh, what you said is the problem, especially with engineers, for example, I guess with IT less the same, um, is that uh, I see it with my engineers. I just have engineers uh, as employees and uh, they're like, oh, it's so great. Like this feature can, uh, the product can do now this feature and this and this and this. So yeah, but the customer, of course, he's also happy when they have it, uh, they have it but they don't pay for it. So we are not developing and we do not spend time on that doing that. But it's so great. So yeah, yeah, it's great, but <laughs> no one wants to have it. It's, it's fine when it's there and they're also happy, but they would never pay money for that. Mm -hmm. And I think there's really something a bit missing and also like in the education system, uh, which is more like, I do not want, to, uh, I don't think the Americans are the best ones, but they, they are like, also knowing a bit more about the economics behind it. Also, if they're like really, really science and really, really deep into tech, I think that's something what we can maybe more implement also in like the German uh, education system. Okay, so there is a lot to, to learn from different sides, basically. Yeah. Right? Not just uh, kind of industry versus academia, but also different, maybe cultural angles, economic. Yeah, or, or also different areas. So uh, that the economics also, uh, I know like, uh, I'm also an engineer. Of course, everyone hates like, uh, like if you're an engineer, or something that everyone is always against like the uh, uh, the economic people um, but uh, <laughs> it, it's like that um, but uh, a bit we have to take from them uh, also from the knowledge because otherwise uh, it's, it's not just good <laughs> Christina, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I agree to that. Like sometimes I feel there's things you could do that are super easy, but because they are not technically interesting, we are like, oh, really? I mean, everyone could build that. Why should we do that for the customer? So you really have to like have that perspective and that empathy with the customer um, when when you start a company. And I think in general, I mean, obviously it makes sense to, to cooperate um, between academia and to have research and um, startups or companies in general together but I couldn't imagine for myself to like do both at the same time like I think it depends on your role also in the company like founding a company and still staying in academia at the same time I think it's going to be very hard to focus and really push one topic forward so having the the contact and being connected and maybe having employees that do some research that totally makes sense because you need to stay close and like generate new ideas and so on but really leading a company and then doing research it's so different in terms of mind share and the way your brain works that I imagine it would be quite hard, at least for me. So <laughs> maybe something that Stepan can react on immediately. <laughs> uh, I completely agree. Uh, I, although I hope, what? Uh, although I hope it can 
yeah, still work because I'm interested in the research perspective and I, I did hire someone to do the managing part. So hopefully that part could work because yeah, I'm completely clueless about that part. <laughs> so it would not be well if I do it. <laughs> I mean, we did apparently some mistakes even in, you know, before starting the company that the manager told us, well, you shouldn't have done this. Well, it sounded like a good research idea. So, yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, do we have questions from the audience already or we just continue? Yeah, just jump in any moment. So I'm looking at, no, okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe Nella, you can okay. take over. Yeah, maybe next question. I, I think, uh, especially for uh, Carmen, it will be it will be obvious <laughs> what the answer is. But um, the question would be like, how do you take into account uh, sustainability in the in the setup of the company and 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 also uh, in maintaining uh, the company? Yeah. Well, for, for us, for you, it's, it's central, the, obviously. <laughs> yes. And I think for NACT as well. Um, I focus on sustainability in my um, in my studies. I studied engineering mechanical engineering and with the focus on sustainability and um, of course it's just um, well it's our goal to make a more livable world to contribute to a better world and a better world has to be sustainable but that mm -hmm. is not only the um, ecological part but also the social and also the economy part because something can only be sustainable if it's all three parts so it has to be economically mm -hmm. sustainable sustainable as well yeah I see. Thank you. Anybody else wants to comment on that? Yeah, I can fully agree. I think um, sustainability is for once um, making green products and um, making sure to take in the production, the um, use of the product in case if it is a product, um, and then also um, the uh, how to take care of the product if it's at the end of its life. Um, yeah, but also there's people who are producing it and the area where it's produced and uh, making sure that it's fair trade and um, taking care of your co-workers and everything. I think it's uh, sustainability is not only trees. Mm -hmm. um, there's much more to it. Yeah. yeah, you have to take an account all of it at the same time, which mm -hmm. is a lot of work, but I think it's the only way. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Ahmad, please. Uh, uh, I, oh, I don't need microphone. Yeah. Do I need a microphone? Yeah, screen is one. No. Yeah. Okay. But the, okay. Thank maybe you. keep yours. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Hello. Okay. So um, I personally have a very good, uh, uh, very good. Oh, there is iPhone still there. Oh, wow. Um, I personally have a very good, uh, actually excellent experience with startups. I had my own. Uh, it was sold recently. And I always encourage uh, all my PhD students not to go to big tech companies and give their intellectual properties to them, but just try it with their own startups, which is not always easy in, in a country like Germany because the culture is a bit different. My question to those of you who are who started with a startup is, because it's different areas. We didn't invite people only from uh, IT security. What was your motivation? That would be my question. Who my that? motivation was that uh, I worked quite a lot uh, during I was studying. Um, I didn't been to lectures so often because I get bored quite fast. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, I was a uh, study here. So, um, and I was working for a lot of companies, always on the test bench. So for example, for NASA or for Airbus or, or whatever. And I was always working with these kind of like these pressure measuring stuff. And I really hated it. And I thought, oh, there's now 3D printing and uh, that could solve so many of my problems. Yeah, so basically I saw a need. I saw there are so many problems and uh, that's the reason why I founded a company. Basically, I, 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 it wasn't in my head that I become an entrepreneur. I just want to, okay, I have to found the company to solve that problem. Okay, now I am an entrepreneur. So uh, I, yeah, I still slept, uh, yeah, I, I somehow slipped into it. <laughs> okay, so, so, so you, you, your uh, uh, motivation was problem uh centric not uh, philosophical so it's uh, just want to solve a problem yeah, most uh, most uh, company uh, foundings uh, or foundations are now uh, like based on uh, yeah the motivation is exit 
I want to become super rich. That's like uh, what most of the people have uh, in mind currently. Oh, are there? Because you, you guys were talking about. Yeah, maybe not, not you. I'm not talking <laughs> about you. But uh, I, what I heard, like uh, that, that's the most, uh, that's that the really uh, real, yeah, hard uh, motivation uh, to become really rich. Because the other one in the panelists, they were talking about sustainability to be uh, useful for for the society and. Uh, So yeah, the was, others tell that as well. Yeah. It's not a, <laughs> so it's not so a, you, you just you just skip that part. So now maybe you you tell, uh, tell us you, what was your. Yeah, I, I don't know that many people that are in just for the money because, it, well, mostly it's just not paid well. So <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, most of the people that start startups they won't end up very rich. So that shouldn't be your motivation. That's well my two cents on it it's so nice <laughs> <laughs> um, but um why i started it um i wanted i had this idea in my mind to make the world a better place and that's why i started mechanical engineering my studies and then i went for my internship into a big corporation um I was in the team that was trying to to replace the fossil plastics with uh, recycled plastics, but it was so, so difficult because there was, well, the company wanted to get more sustainable, but there were so many other goals as well. And then there's the money and then, then oh no, we have to fo solve that problem first. So sustainability, sustainability we will do that later. So it's very, very difficult in a big corporation. So when my colleague asked me if I wanted to uh, to start a startup with him, um, I think, um, well, with my own company, I can be a lot faster. I can help other people be faster and actually bring in this, the solution into the world. Um, for, so for me, it was about speed. I, I think guess. that's a really good motivation. What yeah. do you have? So, but a lot of like XPCG, McKinsey, they see our oh, now uh, climate change, great topic, uh, found a company uh, and yeah. uh, sell it quite fast to become super rich <laughs> <laughs> because everything company is a unicorn. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so very good question. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, we are working in the domain of security and AI. So this is very trendy topic there is a lot of research happening there is a lot of relevant important problems also connected with sustainability i mean just running finding those machine learning models that cost so much money that uh, uh, uses so much electricity and then we were working in the domain and people were saying well what you did here it's good what you did there it's good it makes sense what do you think about this what do you think about that and then somehow we kind of started thinking okay it seems what we are saying does make sense to people. So maybe we should <laughs> try to, to offer it in a, on a more professional level, because I mean, while being pure academics, we say, well, this sounds like an interesting research problem, we will check it. But if company has something, we say, ah, oh, yeah, this is kind of boring because there is no novelty. So yeah, deal with it. So your motivation was, uh self-discover you discovered that you have a value yes mm -hmm. i hope i have a value <laughs> yes yeah mm -hmm. okay more comments uh, mm. what reactions should i comment as well yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um i think for me it was mostly um working according to my own values um, as Carmen mentioned before, sustainability is always more expensive, much more work, and can always be pushed to the side easily, uh, while still saying you're a green company and you have a green product or whatever. Um, and especially in our field of natural cosmetics, there's always, especially if, I mean, in the when you look for sustainable makeup removal supplies it's always oh the sustainable makeup removal thing and then it's packaged in wood but it's still regular plastic and it's not functional it's always a lot of green labeling and for me also as a um as a user as a customer it bothered me a lot that i even uh, while doing months of research for the perfect product i couldn't find it because there was always a huge company behind the small label um, that didn't really have the sustainability in focus. And so um, we wanted to create something where it was really, even in the aspects we don't show, um, we make sure that um, 
we produce only locally in Germany and Austria. And yeah, it, I mean, it creates um, a lot of cost for us and it's more complicated, but, and so many people came to us, why don't you produce in China? It's so much cheaper. Why don't you do it? You could sell it for much cheaper, but it's not the focus and it's not the point. And so we thought we could only realize it by doing it ourselves. Okay, cool. Like. You get all your answers. Uh, yeah, yes, I think it's it's very interesting for others to mm. to hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Me, yeah. <laughs> okay. Of course. Okay, moving on to another question from the audience. No, so um, so since this is a high tech women event, <laughs> maybe uh, to to reflect a bit from some sort of gender perspective. So, what is your take on that? Uh, do you see some some things becoming different uh, with respect to gender? Uh, like we have all female uh, <laughs> entrepreneurs here, but yeah, and Stepan, of course. But like, just you know, <laughs> what is your say um, experience from the work floor with respect to, to 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 gender issues in that could be maybe startup specific or considering some special backgrounds of people or is it something that you could say okay this is better than in other places or worse just anything that comes to your mind uh, we Katarina. have customers in more than 80 countries and uh, three uh, of uh, the customers there are female in my world there are no women uh, because i i mainly work like in oil and gas also a lot of uh, military and these kind of stuff so i have no woman but i'm used to it I, also when i started mechanical engineering we're like 10 percent women four percent you could actually identify as a woman and long hair and breasts are not a sign for women so um therefore uh, i'm i'm used to that i know that i always have to uh, be like 180 percent or so um, uh, compared to a man uh, also when i go to a customer which is not knowing me um, they will ask me at least 10 really really mean deep tech questions so that they see ah, okay she's not just a sales uh, girl here she she also knows her stuff so uh, therefore that's normal and i i must say i don't care and uh, is there a hope huh is there a hope that situation could change it already changed a bit, so there are more women now also in engineering. Um, but uh, I think it really goes slowly. So because uh, Technic is not so uh, into a lot of uh, girls' head. Um, and also you have to start really uh, when they are young. So that's also the reason why I go to schools, for example, bring a little 3D printer and say, hey, cool, uh, look what you can also do. Print, I don't know, Princess and Lilithi or something. Um, so it can be really cool um, uh, to be like good at math. And these are not just the ugly geeks which are doing that. And um, so, yeah, to, to make it more, yeah, uh, more than that also uh, female people could like it. So you are doing some things already, but could we do more? I think uh, it will take some time. Um, uh, what uh, they could, for example, or like uh, often in newspapers, uh, what would help is uh, there's like an article about, for example, a cloud. Uh, and Christina would make a comment, yeah, here, the, uh, as I'm an expert, I said this and that. And it should be just like written, yeah, from Christina Gross. And not like, oh, there's a woman. She can also say something about this, uh, although she's a woman. And uh, just that it comes more natural and normal. I think that would already help if you're getting more used to it. Thanks. Someone else, maybe? maybe. Najwa, yeah. Um, yeah um, today, I think I have about 25% women in my team. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I mean, if we look at historical trends, the number of women in engineering and STEM has been increasing. It, it is still low, and I would like to see it uh, growing. And, and I, actually, in the UAE, you see a lot of women in and science, math, STEM, et cetera. And the trend is just that the number is increasing. On your question about how to make this better, obviously by education and like when they're younger to have like more awareness to encourage women to go into STEM uh, fields more. But also, I guess, flexibility in the workplace is very important, right? Because I mean, the certain society things are expected from the women and, uh, you know, raising families, etc. So the more flexibility we have in the workplace is better. But I feel what is very important today, and this is what 
I, I would like to believe will make a change is that more and more women are coming into, you know, becoming professors in universities. They are more in leadership uh, positions and they're encouraging younger women and actually they're making the workplace a bit more flexible. So that gives me hope that there will be like more women getting into STEM and engineering and, and science in general. Kind of having more role, role models. Role models, et cetera. And us as women, it's, the onus is on us actually to mentor younger younger women and encourage them to get into this and also to 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 provide them the work environment that, that allows them to be more in, in this field. Yes, that's what we are doing right now, right? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I also think the role model thing is very, very important because um, for me, it also were female role models that brought me or gave me the idea, yeah, you could do mechanical engineering, why not? And um, so I'm also doing like a mentoring program with, with girls for the STEM field. And yeah, it's also, it will take time, <laughs> especially with female founders. I think it's, it's 70%, 17% of founders are female. It's very, very low number and, but it will increase with time and it will increase with, uh, with things like this, this panel discussion where we are kind of role models <laughs> and, um, but the thing you said that, um, it's very difficult for you sometimes because you're a woman. And for me, I think it's the other way around. Um, I get a lot of stage time because I am a woman. My colleagues were never asked for a, a, a program like this, no interviews. Mm -hmm. um, so our company actually gets a lot of uh, stage time because we have a female founder and well, people want to to help <laughs> increase the, the female percentage in, in STEM fields and in, in founders. That's completely true. And I also think that every woman should not just uh, say the whole time, oh God, I'm a woman, that's so sad. And oh, they should really <laughs> see the advantages, uh, what they have. So for example, as you say, like also, uh, like I think every two months there's like an article in, I don't know, Süddeutsche Zeitung or Handelsblatt or so about uh, my company. Uh, also, if it's said, not everybody is now interested in aerodynamic measurement systems is, of course, because I'm a woman in startup, in tech. And therefore, of course, that's the reason because I'm a woman, they, they write about us. <laughs> yeah, so, I think it's quite at, ironic. It, it, yeah, <laughs> at, the, at, at, the, at the beginning, you're thinking, oh, you're somehow disabled, but then you get used to it. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> With special flowers. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I think we edit out some of the things here. <laughs> <laughs> but if I can comment on the um, on the media, I think the media plays a big role because um, also not even not only uh, newspapers but also movies and uh, TV series. If you see role models who do something like this, and it's not just a very stereotypical side character who's the geek of the show, but some like really cool aspiring role models. Um, when I was a kid, I don't remember anyone um, in any movie who I would aspire to be because they were very stereotypical, very, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, non-talking females. Um, and if you have more examples just of how diverse a woman could be in the future, um, you would actually get the idea of there are many possibilities. And I think the media plays a big role. And now that uh, social media is around, I think many more people get an audience and get the possibility to show themselves and uh, to show that it's much more diverse than just Hollywood, maybe. Um, yeah, I think there's a big role. Thanks. Okay, yeah. So um, I think Najwa already touched it a bit, like you said something about the flexibility on the work floor uh, related to um, things that we expect socially from women, for yeah. example. Um, so next question is on a work-life balance. Um, do you have the feeling that you had to make um, like sacrifices to get where you are now, and how did you how did you deal with that? Like, it's a, yeah, sure. I mean, I think in general, there's like lots of different jobs where you can work a lot of hours. So that's not really specific to mm -hmm. whether you have a startup or you work for a large company that can always happen. And like, it depends on the, on the lifestyle you want to have and on the goals you want to achieve also a bit on the culture of the company. Um, but in the end, like, I think the main difference is just the like amount of time you are thinking about the company, mm -hmm. right? Cause you never, 
stop. I mean, you you don't really stop. I mean, we went for dinner yesterday night and we were like, hey. <laughs> that's basically what's in our heads when we get out from work and we actually start our life part of the life. But <laughs> it doesn't always um, it doesn't always work, but that's also fun because it's it's nice to share it's like you you experience a lot of interesting things you like get to meet a lot of people that you would probably not meet in a in a regular environment because then you're like more limited to what um your job is there but i i think in this role it, it just mixes up and you have to be aware of it and you also have to kind of embrace it and then yeah. it's fine and of course you should like keep some life part um to your life because things can always go wrong and you need to like yeah be <laughs> be ready basically see. so you don't see it as a sacrifice but more like something else good uh instead of yeah those things that you me, might yes. miss yeah i see For somebody me, else? The own, well it's my own company so with the we can create our own values so we can create the company that we want with the values, with the work-life balance that we want. So it's yeah. a huge opportunity for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Thanks. Yeah. But I think, especially at the beginning, uh, it's really a roller coaster. So in the morning, you're, for example, like frog from your feelings. Huh? Uh, in the morning, you think like, oh, great, great. Everything works good. Customers are happy. Then you get an email. So, okay, and I can also <laughs> die. And uh, then you get a call and then it gets better. And uh, the whole day is like up and down, up and down. And uh, you have that feeling the whole time. And uh, I still have it, but it's it's better. Yeah, It becomes more like, oh, I'm used to it. It's It will be okay so uh, not so bad but um it's that's like mentally it's stressful mm -hmm. um so uh, and uh, there's also not uh, someone for example for uh, um like in a huge company there's always like a boss which telling you oh you did a great job and uh, you don't have that if you're mm -hmm. the boss no one is telling you oh you did a great job so mm -hmm. uh, you have to uh, find like your own motivation also like uh, and uh, uh, for what you're doing it so of course at the beginning is your vision but uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's of course the vision is overall but uh, at like especially if you are like really low and you're like oh god uh, I hate it so much and yeah, I do it because of that or so. Uh, therefore, um, yeah, you have to find your own way. And mm -hmm. I don't think that there are like tips or tricks or so, but everyone needs to find it out for themselves. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Interesting. Yes. More comments? Uh, I think I just tend to agree that it it is periodic, right? So there are certain periods. I, I don't have my own startups, but I do manage big teams. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, um, you know, you have to deal with client, client requirements, etc. So it depends on the period. So it's pretty periodic. But I also do tend to agree it is about the culture that you instigate in your team and how you, you, you advertise or you advocate for this work-life balance. Mm -hmm. um, having good teams is a very important factor, right? So when, once you, you have the culture of you want to, to instigate some work-life balance there, you, your efficiency is important, um, flexibility is important, I think mm -hmm. it becomes manageable. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yes. Okay. Do we have any questions from the um, people online? Ahmad, we cannot get... Okay, okay, so they would tell. Okay, then moving on. Um, next question would be, um, like, what would be your advice to young talents that are considering similar path, like, say, having an idea of their own that would they would like to turn into a startup? So follow up this path of entrepreneurship. Do you have some tips do for those? <laughs> <laughs> no. Don't do it alone would be my advice. Yeah. <laughs> find, find some people that help you, like find some co-founders and um, start working on it because alone it's difficult, I guess. I mean, I haven't tried it alone, but I, I wouldn't want to miss um, to miss the other two guys and like sharing perspectives, sharing the stress, sharing the pain. It makes it much easier. And also you have like much better ideas when you bring different perspectives together. So if you find some people that are a bit different as well have like different backgrounds and so on you you just have a much wider picture of the world and i think this always helps to understand your opportunities and to um, also motivate yourself in the end mm -hmm. and also uh, try to to team up with people that are more experienced or that was not really important in your case 
I mean, we, yeah, if you can, of course, and then, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and also search advice later on, right? It's not only the people that you work with on an everyday basis, but later on you realize you have challenges in certain topics or areas that you were not familiar with before. I mean, we talked about uh, the organization before and you don't know what is expecting you or how it feels when suddenly you need to like reorganize yourself. I thought that's something that only large organizations do, but we figured out it like doesn't work the way it used to work before. So you need to, to like, yeah, get advice from more experienced people because you can just save a lot of time when they tell you some tips on how it works and of course then you always need to experience it yourself because otherwise you don't really understand but at some point you just get faster and and pushed and that's helpful so mm -hmm. good advice is important uh, some other takes on this Barbara. I would personally say, sorry. Louisa, yeah. <laughs> uh, find something that you enjoy because it's a lot more emotional, as we said before, with the work-life balance. Um, I didn't comment on it because I don't know if there's a balance. I don't know. <laughs> I went to bed at 2 a.m. last night and I don't know. It's, uh, it's a lot more powerful. It does a lot with you. you uh, you're right behind it and it touches you when it goes up and down. Um, so if you don't care too much about the project, I think it's hard to be the force behind it all the time. I think what's also important is at the beginning, like first you have to talk to a lot of people because there are people which are like afraid that their ideas getting stolen by someone. Yeah, probably not. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that you really find out if you're not the only person which thinks it's maybe a great idea or if there are also others outside. So uh, and uh, find out that really, really fast. Uh, and for example, with the exist um, a grant from the Bundesministerium, uh, it's one year for free to find out if there like people who want your product or not and um, I want to come into the um, work-life balance yeah yeah it's 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 a great uh, thing work-life balance but um, and I would also love to have work way less uh, and do way more with my friends or so but yeah it's 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 not there yet and i also would love it to uh, for for like all my employees um but they also have to work especially like it's end of the year they work as shit uh, right now so it's really really a lot therefore uh yeah it's it's great to create values but sometimes uh there's also you have to make money right so uh there's also yeah they, they have other like things which uh, uh which motivates them uh and yeah they can for example also sometimes work at 11 in any evening or so if something needs to be finished but uh, therefore they have other um, uh, possibilities to, to what others uh, like in big companies doesn't have so I just want to add more yeah, uh, so, <laughs> yes so from, from the perspective of you know just starting or something like that I think preparing more is very important especially once you start from from the academic perspective, you start, okay, we have cool idea. And if we get money, we will build. And then, you know, you leave all the problems for later, but you don't realize that, well, sooner or later you get money and then, okay, but what to do now with that money, how to, how to actually hire someone, how to really open the startup, how to find someone who will manage the other parts of the business that you actually do not understand. So for us, that was a big problem this big problem because we were all the time thinking only about one perspective and then at the moment when we got money it was so oh, what to do now mm -hmm. yeah. but i also think that um currently it's a hype or it's not just currently but it's uh, like since some years it's a hype to uh, found a startup and uh like uh, in the promotion or like uh, in every article you see uh, or you have the feeling uh, it's it's more partying than really working you just uh, jump from event to event and uh, explain everyone how great your company is and uh, that's basically it but actually it's a lot of work and a lot of people don't have that in their mind when they found the company that they really have to work and uh, it's really stressful especially at the beginning it can be also now so mm -hmm. And you fail a lot yeah. all the time. Oh, you do. Oh, all the time. <laughs> yeah. So that would also be something. Don't be afraid of failure because um, you have an idea and it's probably a quite good idea, but you will change it a lot over the course of your startup and over in the first half or the year, it 
it will we we changed like 180 degrees <laughs> so we we went in that direction and then we saw that well it won't work that way so we have to change something so yeah you you have to fail because otherwise you won't get the best product in the end as well may i ask one question yeah, to sure. the ai experts here <laughs> or like also here in the audience uh, and i had a, a really interesting discussion uh with a person as we are all women here uh, and uh, <laughs> that ai is um as it's mainly developed by men because uh, more it uh, people are men um so it's not really ai it's more like a man um what uh, like may man, I? Uh, male intelligence may I? Uh, yeah <laughs> so I, i don't know if you can call it intelligence then but um if it's male then it cannot be intelligence okay <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry uh, but um what is your uh, your idea so what is your um comments on that i don't know honestly i, I mean um, again from purely research perspective i know a lot of top men uh, working in AI, but also a lot of top uh, females working in no, AI. Yeah. So, but I, I'm sorry, but I don't think training AI has any gender bias, right? I mean, um, it's coming. It's coming. So we have a comment. Thank you. So there have been studies in the US that AI was biased gender biased. Um, and the, the study was, I think, um, it was not really gender biased, it was race biased. Um, so there was an AI program where it was trained on how to, um, what to give as punishment when someone gets uh, caught with say drugs or something, right? Uh, things that you're not supposed to carry around or sell. And so that AI program was, um, was fed with data for all the cases which were I don't know, in whole uh, state or I don't exact the details anymore. And then by region uh, and by, by district. And what they saw is that the AI system became biased towards uh, say uh, um, uh, African-American people versus Caucasian or white people. The punishments were stronger in that case. And the AI program took that bias over. So, uh, so there is, There are AI. Uh, uh, so I actually, I, was, I, I wanted to continue. Sorry. Oh, maybe uh, you wanted to no, add that. No, it's all right. Yeah. So what <laughs> sorry, I wanted sorry. to say, it's not, it's not biased. The model itself is not biased. It depends on the data that you feed it, right? So if you have, if you feed the data, that is, uh, if you feed the AI model, the model itself is not by de facto biased, right? It depends on the data that you feed it. And if you feed it with data that is more biased our males, or that gives you the result, or the output has class classifications that it's more biased towards males, this is when it becomes biased with male um, information, right? But it also depends on what AI model we're talking. If we're talking about the AI models I was mentioning before about cyber attacks, or it depends on where you're applying it, right? If you're applying it, if it's a female or male that is training an AI model on a cyber, on a cyber related problem, I don't see that how you will have gender bias yeah. in that, right? But if it is related to a human study that has to do, for example, of, I don't know, smoking habits of male versus females, this is when you can bias the, the model, or this is when you can bias it with race, or this is, and it depends on how you feed it, the data you feed it with, but also the availability of data, right? So that's that that was gonna be my, my answer. I'm sorry, I interrupted. No, it's all right, no problem, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> That's that's what the automatic processes they do. Uh, they are already trained in it in such a way that people don't could be that, that yeah. Uh, and uh, we, we see that, but I, I think this bias between men and women and uh, male and female or whatever this will uh, vanish at hopefully at some time because it's based on data. But for technical issues, I don't see any gender issue except the fact that. Most uh, people who are working in this area are male, but it's changing uh, because there are also women working in this uh, area. What is, but what we can see is that those women are trained by many men because they were their professors. So that means we need uh, more 
so to say, women in, 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 in those areas, if, if somebody is, is thinking that that will influence the way of thinking, the, 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 the way of making one of what you learned it from your teacher, and then you continue and the teacher will die, even you go, go that in that corner, then I think this, this is also going to change. Uh, this is my observation in, in the AI area. But since I'm very critical towards AI, and we are looking at AI from the security point of view, and we love AI because as long as AI exists, security people will be never out of job. Because these algorithms are so bad and so primitive in, in general, if you look at them. Uh, so that we have a lot of things to do. So I see from a business point of view, I see AI as a gold mine. We have to see uh, from the discrimination, I think that will hopefully one day go away. But not forever, not forever. The, the discrimination will be there, but maybe not for women and men, but other races. I, I agree with both your comment and from Najwa. The problem is, of course, always the data. I mean, if the data is uh, biased, then the model will be biased, but it- You mean if you feed the shit, you get shit out, right? Exactly. exactly. Yeah, you must, you must write it out. <laughs> exactly. But also, what what Amad is saying, it's how those algorithms work. Why do we have today security of AI as a, such a big hype? Because AI was never meant, designed so many years ago to be secure. I mean, it was done to to do the other things, classification, regression, whatever. And then once you say, okay, is it secure? No, it's not because it was never meant to be. So. Also, those algorithms, it's very difficult to fight bias or anything like that because people did not think or think of it as a problem when, when the algorithms were designed. So it's there is nothing wrong with the algorithm except that everything is wrong because it did not consider all the perspectives in the beginning. Now, the algorithms are there for 20, 30, 50 years. You don't want to say, well, now I will change the algorithm, although we are doing that all the time. But you, you deal with it, you fix the problems, you patch it, and then you say, well, now it's a bit better. But the problem is always fundamental because it wasn't meant to, to consider the data issue, the other issues except the simple task that it needed to do. Yeah, I mean, it does mistakes, but that's normal. I mean, I would be surprised if it doesn't make mistakes because then it would be <laughs> better than it should it was designed for. Okay, so before this becomes an AI panel, yeah. maybe uh, closing it, I guess, there are no questions from here. So maybe final statement from each of you, uh, starting from Louisa. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Statement on AI? No. <laughs> on anything. On what what do you, what you want to to kind of communicate to the crowd today? Product. <laughs> Get naked. <laughs> bye bye bye. Um, overwhelmed. Um, maybe someone else. <laughs> maybe someone wants to take over, and then we come back to Lisa. Najwa, do you have? I think my message would be. Uh, sorry, Stepan. Just specifically to women is that. Um, it's just they need to go for what what they want to, to to do, right? So today we see lots of pressure on having women in STEM, and there will be an increasing number of STEM. But at the end of the day, every single woman has to go for whatever she's passionate for. And what I see today is that women can excel; they can excel as much as men. It's just that they need to start focus and go for for what they they want and where their real passion is. Yeah, like follow your dreams. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> Okay. Stepan? Yeah, I will, I will go for the general startup uh, uh, perspective. I think it's a very good experience that uh, as many people as possible should try. I mean, and like like you said, many will be failures. I mean, the uh, the startup will not succeed, but it's still very very interesting experience because you still learn a lot. So uh, I I do recommend to people if if you think you have good ideas, try to try to make it happen. Go for a big company. If the big company can help you make a startup, if you think that's the better way to do, but do something with your ideas. Thanks, yeah. Carmen. To add to that, if you fail, <laughs> then just try again. <laughs> and um, well, do it step by step. Um, no one can go get to a really big uh, goal by just leaping there. You have to take it day by day or hour by hour. 
problem by problem, and then you will be able to do it. Thanks, uh, Katarina. Your first uh, point by my product. Uh, everyone needs aerodynamic measurement systems, so I uh, have that in mind. And the other thing is, uh, please don't use uh, the reason I'm a woman as an excuse for everything uh, or for anything, I guess. So uh, because uh, also for men, it's uh, it's they, 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 when they have to go on a stage and have to talk. Or so for them, it's also not that easy. And uh, I saw so many women. Say, oh God, yeah, because I'm a woman. And I'm more shy, so they don't care. It's a, a jump into the cold water, so please. And and, and I hope that uh, less women uh, take the reason they are women as an excuse. Thanks. And Christina? Um, well, for me, it would be don't be afraid to like change something if you don't like it. And I think this belongs to whatever area you work in so i have met so many people now like from our customers and you talk to people and they're like oh yeah the situation here is so terrible and we've been doing this for years and it will never change and i feel like why are you doing that i mean you are in it that you have like all the possibilities you want to why are you staying in this company like why do you think that just because it's a big company, maybe a famous company, it's better to stay there than to change. And it's the same like in the startup life. Like if you do something and you realize it doesn't work, don't be afraid to like let it go and do something else or like change it so you learn what works best. And if you feel like, and if you start a company and you learn, okay, maybe that's not for me, then stop it and go and do something else. Like there's no force from anyone. We have a lot of opportunities right now, so we should well, use that and just enjoy what we are doing. And okay, thanks, uh, Louisa. That's so well said. <laughs> I think other oh, than okay. a get a knocked product, of course. <laughs> okay. No, um, I can totally agree. Yeah. Thank you all for participating. Thanks, thanks to the audience uh, for saying here. Okay. Um, use the opportunity and talk to our panelists uh, later in the coffee break. And uh, yeah, with this we conclude. Nela, you yes. want to say something? No, is it coffee break now? Or? <laughs> no, I'm. Wait, I was uh, just one. Yeah, yeah. No, one so uh, I, I have to, as as you all know, we give you some uh, presents each time. That's for you. Thank you. It is made by love. Yes, give it to me. Handmade <laughs> by students, and we observe them that they do mm -hmm. it right. Thank so you. For you. Thanks a lot, uh, Christina. For you. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Katarina. Katarina, so, sorry. I'm not coming. Come, no, sorry. I, I'm very sorry. Yeah, very yeah. Sorry. It doesn't matter. But you said <laughs> you should not be uh, caring about if you're a woman or a man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We all are women and men at the same time. Okay, so Louisa, 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 it's you. you are Louisa. Thank you very much. I, I think you have habits. already, okay. you have nothing. So. Oh. oh, well. Okay, thanks a lot for, for this amazing panel. Yeah, of course, yeah, you are the boss. Okay. Uh, I just go out of the ski yeah. and then you can okay. close it. So, so thanks a lot and we hope you enjoyed the panel and you learned something. So enjoy Thank the you rest very much for coming. Thank you. <laughs>